Principles of Open Fracture Treatment Treatment for Open Fracture Because the part of the bone has been communicated with external environment, we have to always suspect for bacterial contamination which can further complicate into infection. The goal is the prevention of infection and obtaining union of the fracture. Due to associated extensive soft tissue injury, it will take much longer time to heal. The wound Fry considerably, may be a small puncture wound from within by bone, may be from without by a missile, example bullet, may consist of extensive laceration from without. The soft tissue injury associated usually even more extensive than immediately apparent. The external blood loss associated with this is also frequently underestimated. Figure 15.52 Open fracture of the distal end of the tibia the protruding tibial fragment has penetrated the skin from within and the skin has been further torn by severe displacement at the moment of injury. Figure 15.53 Open fracture of the shaft of the tibia, the blades of a power lawn mower penetrated the skin from without and fractured the tibia. There is extensive soft tissue loss as well as loss of large segments of bone. Notice also the associated close fracture of the fibula. Figure 15.54 A. An open fracture of the distal end of femur and proximal end of tibia in a child. A power saw has lacerated an upholst skin and has cut out a portion of femur and tibia. B. Clinical appearance of the limb showing the extensive skin laceration, a falsion of skin, extensive damage to underlying soft tissue and bones. C. After debridement and partial closure of the wound, the residual skin deficit was covered later by a split thickness skin graft. D. One year later, there is extensive scarring but good function. Nevertheless, further reconstructive surgery will be required because of an inevitable growth disturbance in the injured epiphyseal plates. Physis. Classification Gustilo and Anderson Type 1 A clean wound less than 1 cm in length, usually from within, little soft tissue injury. Type 2, a laceration more than 1 cm in length but without extensive soft tissue damage, skin flaps, or falsions. Type 3, extensive soft tissue damage such as a skin flaps, a falsions, and muscle and nerve injury. 3a, extensive soft tissue damage with adequate bone coverage, segmental fracture, gunshot wounds. 3b extensive soft tissue damage with extensive periosteal stripping requires skin flaps or free grafts 3c associated vascular injury requiring repair primary closure for type 1 and 2 infection rate of type 1 and 2 is 2.4 percent delayed closure and antibiotics for type 3 infection rate of type 3 is 10 percent Principles of treatment Cleansing the wound All foreign material should be washed away by extensive pulsatile irrigation and mechanical cleansing with saline or sterile water. Excision of the fertilized tissue or the breakman. All that tissue should be excised, should obtain a culture of the wound. Treatment of the fracture Either by skeletal traction Open reduction with internal fixation or external fixation should be adjusted with the characteristic of the fracture. Closure of the wound It is recommended to delay the closure of the wound after the first 4 to 7 days provided the infection has not developed. Antibacterial drugs should be administered in large dose before, during, and after treatment. However, surgical care of the wound is more important than antibacterial drug. Prevention of tetanus, TT with or without tetagum. Other important things. Anesthesia for patients with fractures. During the first hour, the patient's tissues are somewhat numb, may be possible to reduce without anesthesia, only for the experienced and confident one shot. 
coolness may be reduced after infiltration of a local anesthetic agent. Other regional limb block brachial plexus upper limb and spinal lower limb. In general, best is under general anesthesia due to complete comfort and muscle relaxation. Risk of aspiration due to cease of gastric mobility after the fracture. Best wait at least 6 hours after injury. Temporary spleen should not be removed nor the fracture part removed during the preliminary stage of anesthesia. Painful stimulus will cause risk of cardiac arrest or laryngeal spasm. After care and rehabilitation for patients with fractures, the most important is for to restore optimum function. The more function that can be preserved during the treatment, the less function that has to be restored. The rehabilitation begins with the immediate care of the fracture through emergency treatment, definitive treatment, and beyond until the function is restored to normal or at least near as normal as before. Appropriate elevation of the fractured limb to prevent joint stiffness. All muscles and joints that are not immobilized should be moved by the patient. Isometric and isotonic exercises. Patient mind is an important psychological consideration. Classification of complication of fracture treatment. 1. Skin complication. Tattoo effect from abrasions. Pressure lesion, pressure source, bed source, decubitus ulcers, cast source, cast ulcers. Vascular complication, traction and pressure lesions, Volkmann's ischemia, gangrene and gas gangrene, DVT and PE. 3. Neurological complication, traction and pressure lesions. 4. Joint complication, septic arthritis. 5. Bony complication, osteomyelitis. Recognition and treatment of complication from both the initial injury and its treatment. The total care of the injured must include constant diligence and vigilance. Every complaint of the patient must be attended and examined clinically. When necessary, proceed with special investigations. Initial and early complication, local complication. Skin complications, vascular complication, arterial complication and venous complication, neurological complication, visceral complication, joint complication, septic arthritis, bony complication, osteomyelitis, and a vascular necrosis of bone, remote complication, fat embolism syndrome, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, tetanus, delirium tremens. Skin complication Abrasion with particles of dirt grounded to the dermis, if left uncleansed, will cause tattoo effect. Lacerations, puncture wounds, penetrating missile wounds, avulsion of skin, skin loss common in open fracture, gross swelling resulting blister or blab. Bad sores, cast sores due to constant compression, it is preventable. Figure 15.57 Tattoo effect from residual pigmented dirt that should have been removed from the abrasion during the initial treatment and is not covered by epithelium. This unslightly blemish is preventable. Figure 15.58 Blisters or blebs in the skin of the forearm in association with a fracture of the radius and ulna. One bleb has ruptured and the other is seeping serum. Figure 15.59 Bed sore decubitus ulcer of the heel in an elderly comatose patient. This lesion is preventable by frequent turning of the patient by the nursing staff. Figure 15.60 Pressure sore, cast sore over the lateral aspect of the leg from excessive local pressure of an ineptly molded plaster cast. This iatrogenic complication, which is preventable by appropriate padding and molding, required a skin graft. Vascular complication Arterial complication. Usually, small vessels are torn at the time of all fractures. Injury to major artery is uncommon, particularly serious because of the sequel of persistent arterial occlusion. 
arterial division, a major artery may be completely or incompletely divided. Complete, usually retracts and stops bleeding. Incomplete, continued bleeding may lead to the development of pulsating hematome, false aneurysm, residual hematome locally and ischemia distally. Arterial spasm. When subjected to sudden and severe traction, persistent spasm, occlusion, and ischemia, usually tear in the intima and causing thrombosis, secondary arterial spasm proximally and distally, even more extensive ischemia. Vascular complication, arterial compression. Occasionally, major artery becomes trapped and compressed between two fragments of fracture. Also, can be iatrogenic because of excessive type POP or bandage and progressive swelling. Arterial thrombosis, potential sequel of any arterial injury, higher risk in pre existing arterial sclerosis, recognition of arterial complication. Internal hemorrhage is less obvious than external hemorrhage, usually only by progressively enlarging local swelling. Complete arterial occlusion, initial pallor, loss of pulse, coolness of skin, later causing gangrene. Doppler or arteriography is useful but do not delay surgical exploration. Vascular complication Compartment syndrome, increased pressure of progressive edema within rigid osteofacial compartment either in forearm or leg, increase the content of a given compartment or decreases volume, will elevate intracompartment pressure, usually fracture compartment of the forearm and the anterior tibia. Progressive intracompartment pressure will compromise capillary blood flow to muscles, causing more edema and vicious cycle is established. Nerve can survive up to 2 to 4 hours, muscle up to 6 hours but cannot regenerate. If left untreated, will cause compartmental contracture, may be secondary to 1, proximal extracompartmental occlusion of the main artery supplying the compartment, or 2, intracompartmental injury to either bone, soft tissue, or both, which results in hematoma. Vascular complication, compartment syndrome, most frequently occur in displaced supracondylar fracture of the humerus and damage to the brachial artery in children. Excessive longitudinal traction in the treatment of the femoral shaft fracture in children, fractures of the proximal third of the tibia, drug induced coma with resultant pressure on major arteries from lying on hard surface in awkward position for a prolonged period. Clinical picture severe pain after pain free interval. Passive stretch pain may be masked by a large dose of analgetics. Pallor due to transient decrease in peripheral circulation, puffy swelling of the hand or foot, disturbance of involved peripheral nerve function, paresthesia, hypoesthesia, and paralysis, aka pain, pallor, puffiness, paresthesia, pulseless. Recently, it is possible to measure the intracompartmental pressure. Normals is 0 until 8 mm of mercury. More than 30 to 40 mm of mercury indication of immediate decompression must be left open at least 7 days after which delayed primary closure can be performed. Figure 15.61 Size of vascular complication in relation to fracture 1. Axillary artery fracture dislocation and dislocation of the shoulder 2. Brachial artery supracondylar fractures of the humerus 3. Femoral artery, fractures of the shaft of the femur 4. Popliteal artery, fracture of the distal end of femur and proximal end of tibia, dislocation of the knee 5. Dorsalis pedis artery, fractures in the forefoot Figure 15.62 Impending gangrene of the foot and distal part of the leg in a 15-year-old boy who has sustained a close fracture of the proximal end of the tibia no pulse could be detected below the knee, and the skin was cool with mostly dark discoloration. Figure 15.63 
The value of arteriography in vascular occlusion A. The knee region of a 15-year-old boy with a relatively undisplaced fracture of the proximal end of the tibia and fibula the fracture, which was said to have been angulated, had been reduced 8 hours previously. The foot immediately became white and pulseless. The appearance of the boy's foot on admission is shown at figure 15.62. B. An arteriogram immediately after admission reveals the exact site of vascular occlusion just distal to the bifurcation of the popliteal artery. Exploration of the arteries was performed for foot. The arteries were decompressed after which blood flow was restored. The boy's foot did not become gangrenous, but because of the 8-hour delay before arterial exploration, he did develop Fogman's ischemia, compartment syndrome of the leg muscle requiring fasciotomies. Figure 15.64 Fogman's ischemic contractor post-compartment syndrome of muscle of the forearm in a 6-year-old child. After reduction of the supracondylar fracture of the humerus, the child has complained of severe pain in the forearm. Regrettably, his surgeon prescribed large doses of analgesics that relieved the pain somewhat. In the meantime, the child developed severe Volksmann ischemia compartment syndrome of nerve and muscle in the forearm. In this photograph taken six months later, it is apparent that he has severe deformities and serious disability as a result of progressive contracture of the necrotic muscles that have been replaced by fibrous tissue. This tragic outcome could have been prevented by early recognition of this serious complication, removal of all encircling bandage and cast, fasciotomy, and stabilization of the supracondylar fracture by percutaneous pinning. Treatment of vascular complication Occlusion of major artery requires surgical emergency, precedence over treatment of the associated fracture itself. Constricting cast or bandage must be completely removed, not just cut. Any distortion of the fractured limb or extreme position of a nearby joint should be lessened. If the fracture is being treated by continuous traction, the amount of traction should be decreased. If this failed, emergency arteriogram, no improvement within half hour, explore surgically. Divided artery should be directly sutured or grafted using venous graft or plastic prosthetic. Thrombus, remove, compress, release, contuse or intimal tear, resect and restore continuity, persistent spasm, delayed. After the operative treatment of a vascular complication, internal fixation of the fracture is indicated. Vascular complication Venous complication, diffusion of major vein, may cause by fracture or the muscle, should be repaired to prevent later sequel, venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, DVT and PE, morbidity and mortality, especially vein of the lower limb and pelvis. The main factor is venous status. Diagnosis, DVT, local pain, tenderness midline posteriorly due to swelling, Common sign, less than 15% can be diagnosed clinically. Phenogram, platysmography, Doppler, PE, small, may be undetected, moderate, sudden onset of chest pain, deep snow, hemoptysis, friction drop, radiographic infracted fragment, massive chest pain, then drop dead. Prevention of venous thrombosis, avoid local pressure on vein, actively contract all muscle in injured limb, CPM, heparin, treatment of venous thrombosis, heparin or warfarin, surgical thrombectomy. Neurological complication, brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerve may be caused by the either original injury or inept treatment of the fracture itself less often, relatively common with specific fractures and dislocation. Fissural complication Thoracoabdominal fissura may be injured, independent from the fracture, or penetration by a sharp fracture fragments, displaced fracture of the rib, hemopericardium, cardiac tamponade, hemothorax, hemonumothorax, displaced fracture of lower limb, perforate liver, spleen, or kidneys, thoracic lumbar spine, 
paralytic in Leo's gastric dilatation, displaced fracture of pelvis, rupture the bladder or urethra, colon, or rectum. Figure 15.65 Pulmonary infarct in the left lower loop of the lung due to pulmonary embolism in 35-year-old woman. Five days after close reduction of a fractured tibia, the patient experienced the sudden onset of severe pain in the left side of the chest as well as left shoulder tip pain referred from the left diaphragm. This radiograph reveals a triangular area of density representing the infected segment as well as evidence of a pleural effusion. Figure 15.66 Size of neurological complication in relation to fracture 1. Brain, skull fractures 2. Spinal cord, cervical and thoracic spine fractures and dislocation 3. Cauda equina, lumbar spine fractures and dislocation 4. Sciatic nerve, posterior dislocation and fracture dislocation of the hip 5. Medial and lateral popliteal nerve, dislocation of the knee 6. Lateral popliteal nerve, vulnerable to external pressure from bandage and cast. 7. Ulnar nerve, a falsehood fracture separation of the medial epicondyle. 8. Median nerve, supracondylar fracture of the humerus. 9. Radial nerve, fracture of the shaft of the humerus. 10. Circumflex nerve, dislocation and fracture dislocation of the shoulder. Joint complication after an open intraarticular fracture, or less often after open operation, the serious complication is septic arthritis, unless treated early and effectively, will cause destruction of articular cartilage and degenerative joint disease. Bony complication, infection of bone or osteomyelitis. Open fractures are susceptible to infection. The aims of the treatment of open fracture is to minimize the risk of acute osteomyelitis and its sequel. Chronic osteomyelitis, delayed union and non-union. A vascular necrosis of bone caused by disruption of the nutrient vessel at the time of original injury or may be iatrogenic, lead to delayed union and subsequent joint incongruity and AVN. Figure 15.67 Osteomyelitis complicating open reduction of fractures A. Severe osteomyelitis of the radius complicating open reduction of a closed fracture in a young man. The wound has broken open and a chronic infected bone is exposed in its depths. The patient disability will be greatly increased and prolonged as a result of this serious complication. B. Severe osteomyelitis of the shaft of the femur, complicating open reduction and intramedullary rod fixation of a closed fracture in a young woman. Superiorcellular new bone can be seen at each end of a necrotic infected fragment sequestrum. This infection will be exceedingly difficult to control. The sequestrum will have to be excised and the entire area irrigated continuously with a combination of antibiotics and a detergent such as aloe vera. The intramedullary nail will have to be removed as soon as there is sufficient newborn formation to provide stability at the fracture site. Figure 15.68 a typical ring sequestrum in the anterior cortex of the tibia due to the complication of a pin tract infection at the site of a pin that had been used for continuous skeletal traction. The radio-opaque ring-shaped sequestrum is surrounded by a radio-loosened area of osteolytic resorption of bone. The infection subsides after removal of the sequestrum. Figure 15.69 Post-traumatic avascular necrosis of bone A. Avascular necrosis of the femoral head complicating a fracture of the femoral neck in a 40-year-old woman Not also that there is a non-union of the fracture B. Avascular necrosis of the proximal half of discovered complicating a fracture in a 22-year-old man Arrow The fracture has failed to unite one year after injury and will require bone grafting. Figure 15.70 Size of a vascular necrosis of bone in relation to fractures 1. Femoral head 
fractures of the femoral neck, dislocation of hip, lunate, dislocation of the lunate, 3 scaphoid, fractures of the scaphoid, 4 radial head, fractures of the neck of the radius, 5 lateral condyle capitellum, fractures of the lateral condyle, especially after excessive soft tissue dissection during open reduction, 6 middle segment of a comminuted fracture, 7 body of the talus, fracture of the neck of the talus. Fat embolism syndrome. Fat globules can be found in the circulation after a major fracture. Only 9% develop fat embolization. Systemic fat embolization causes a significant respiratory distress syndrome. Etiology conjectural and controversial. Stress induced changes in lipid metabolism and blood coagulation, causing chylomicron to form microgobules of fat. Clinical features detectable after a latent period of 2 to 3 days in severe case within few hours of injury. Pulmonary emboli, respiratory distress, dyspnea, hemopsysis, tachypnea, and cyanosis. Cerebral emboli, headache, confusion, irritability, delirium, stupor, and coma. Cardiac emboli, tachycardia, drop in blood pressure. Transient skin lesion, multiple petechial hemorrhage, particularly in the upper chest and axilla, as well as in conjunctivae, febrile, mortality of 20%. Others, pulmonary embolism from DVT, pneumonia from prolonged bed rest, the elderly is particularly susceptible, antibiotics, deep breathing exercise, frequent turning of the patient, if necessary bronchoscopic suction, tetanus, caused by Clostridium tetany, mortality rate of 50%, incubation of 10 to 14 days, Opistotonus, Trismus, Hydrosardonicus, and Fatal Asphyxia. This will require immunization and HTIG plus antibacterial, Derulium tremens, abruptly withdrawn alcohol in chronic alcoholic, Dramatic withdrawal symptoms, disorientation, anxiety, agitation, disturbing visual hallucination, Late complication, local complication, late joint complication, joint stiffness, periarticular adhesion, intraarticular adhesion, adhesion between muscle and between muscles and wounds, post-traumatic degenerative arthritis, bony complication, abnormal healing of the bone, persistent bone infection, post-traumatic osteoporosis, sudex post-traumatic painful osteoporosis, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, refracture, metal failure, muscular complication, traumatic myositis ossificans, post-traumatic ossification, neurological complication, tardine of palsy, remote complication, renal calculi, accident neurosis. Thank you.